probably produced more data as opposed to information per day than, than was ever produced in the entire history of mankind uh, prior to the introduction of computers. The power to collect data in you know, detailed formats about all aspects of your lives um, presents both an opportunity and a threat. The opportunity in the sense that if we understand things like what causes cancer and where and those sorts of things, you know, getting medical data from, from GPs and working out the incidences, that's a really good thing. Really bad thing is that if you collect that personal data, then, you know, governments are able to track your every movement and to work out, you know, uh, exactly how you live your life. And the question is, what is the purpose of doing that? Ideally, you'd like you know, to have a better world. I mean, you should not just be making decisions or trusting a politician to make the right decisions. You should be driven by the data. Do we need that tunnel? Do we need the hospital? Do we need that train station? Why? Information is power. We know that if we're all informed equally, we all feel empowered. So I think you can participate with your citizenry with your communities at a much uh, more even level if you all have the same information that you're making sense of and taking your own insight from. And so the transparency of how information is collected and used to make decisions for the benefit of us all is something that I think many people are interested in. There are um, in any given domain, across society, in any given industry, thousands and thousands of different information systems. And for most things that we do, um, most decisions we're looking for, most analysis, we need to be able to pull data from lots of different places. Some data sets are massive by nature. Satellite data sets, uh, time series data sets that are collected by sensors, might be um, air quality or groundwater levels or things like that. There are some data sets like uh, Twitter or Facebook social data sets that may be very large as well. But uh, a lot of data sets uh, just collected, like soil data for example, might only be collected once a year in the paddock by the farmer, but terribly important data. And if you marry that by all the farmers in Australia and all the paddocks and all the data that's being collected, and if you could put all that together, now that would be a big data set, but it's actually made up of small pieces of data you know, that are being collected. So it's a matter of extracting knowledge and information from the raw pieces that you have um, that allow you to make, um, uh, if you like, produce other data which happens to be informative. Um, it tells you something, it, it's meaningful, rather than just a number about a certain thing at a certain time and in a certain place. From one end of Australia to the other, people are engaged in a multitude of activities which have one thing in common. They are all made easier, faster or less costly through the use of computers. How do you actually value data? You know, how do you put a value on data? Very difficult to explain to politicians and government departments why you need to collect data because the value case for doing that is very difficult. We collect all this data, but what, what are people doing with it? You know, what, show me what people are doing with it. Well, we can't show that so, so easily because the data may not be used for another 20, 50, 100 years, at which time it may be the most valuable data set that you could possibly imagine. If you want to know how to treat cancer patients, you would assume, and I did before I started doing these kind of jobs, that if you have a certain type of cancer, there is a standard recipe that it works best for you that the doctors who went to medical school, that's kind of why they went to medical school. But those recipes change all the time. And they are, you know, if you're trying to work out how many patients survive with this type of treatment in our hospital, how does that, how does that compare to all the other hospitals globally? This is something that integrating data you know, this is, everyone wants a cure for cancer, everyone wants the best treatments. But right now it's very difficult for the doctors to determine which is the best treatment. 
If environment is experiencing pressure, we know there's pressures through population growth, through climate change, etc. It's really important for, for you, for me, to actually be able to monitor some of that at my, at my local level. I want to know what's happening to my coast. I want to understand what's going on in my bay. How is the runoff from the catchment affecting the water? I want to understand that a bit. If I understand it, understanding leads to action. You know, I think in the past, data was generated by government. Um, map data, for example, um, or in the, in the past, um, journalists were, were or, or news was generated by journalists. Now we have everybody blogging, everyone's a photographer, everyone's producing maps, they can contribute to very large scale mapping efforts through um, open street map. They can contribute to knowledge bases through Wiki, Wikipedia and those kinds of things. And that's really democratised the production of information. I think there's no question about the fact that data, um, you know, in research uh, at just about every single level um, is critical to the future of how we live, where we live and, you know, how long we live. We're in a position where, for example, to make a decision about land use, to make a decision about environmental uh, conservation or preservation, to make a decision about um, schools or hospitals or any of those things that are in the public good and in the public domain, we need to have the best data sets we possibly can. I won't pull the log Data is only useful if it's accessible. And you need to ask what audience you are addressing and in what form that data will be producing information that can be presented to that audience. There's a need increasingly for these very large complex systems to start thinking about the social, institutional and economic aspects of, of data and how data flows in the ecosystem and how people are incentivised and disincentivised to share data, what their attitudes to sharing data are, what some of the barriers to enabling data sharing are. I think one of the problems we face in, in Australia, one of the challenges is really around how do we effectively aggregate data from the states and territories to produce national data sets? Because every state and territory collects data in a different way. Uh, and, and, and again, ironically, part of the problem of medical data being collected is that sometimes it's very difficult to actually bring it in in one place. You know, there are all these little um, domains and different ways of putting data together um, where they could be very useful if everybody agreed on the same format um, and, they, and it would save lives. So if you think about the road network, um, the way that you characterise roads, the, the individual mapping processes, um, whether you call it a dual carriageway or two lane road, uh, pretty much everything about how we collect the data is done in a different way. And there's a cost imposed on national agencies to try and put that data together. And we see that pattern in every single domain. So in you know geosciences and uh, environmental sciences, in, in health, in, in education, you know, those similar kinds of challenges exist. So pulling together national data sets becomes quite expensive. And there's a critical role for standards in that process to, uh, to agree on how we can share data, what we call a particular phenomena. Not just about access to the data, having the accepted standards for how to access data securely. And that's, that's really one of the issues right now. So there's one thing having a, a, a service I can talk to, which will allow me access to your data. And so we, do, we have many flavors of doing that. Uh, but there's another which is, how do I securely connect to that service where not everyone in the whole world can access it now? So we do a lot of work in that space. And that's, if the data landscape, the open data landscape is a patchwork quilt, the secure access to data is a, is a string vest, I guess you could say. It's much more fragmented about how to do this and it means different things to different organisations. The other side of things is that not all data should be free. Um, there is some data that needs to be kept private. We all understand the sense of privacy. Um, and certainly as time has gone by and as the governments of the world have become more interested in personal data and what it can tell them, 
Um, I think the, the citizens of the world should be rightly concerned about how that data is being interpreted. But where do you draw the lines of what can we do with this data? So this is kind of, it's a very highly evolving space where there's lots of data being produced all around us. And there's people like myself who know how to build software to bring it together, to tell stories. But there is no cohesive governance uh, across most of this. It's a bit, little bit ad hoc, I'd say. It's certainly in the, in the social media space. You know, certainly in government, there, you know, we can talk about the role of data in democratic process. So improving transparency and accountability in government, that's the big drive in, in open government and open data. Um, and then there's also this concept of democratization of data, which is um, citizen science and the ability to generate new insights from these digital smoke signals, the, the signals that people leave behind on their interactions with service providers, government service providers and private sector on the web. And a data democracy then is this sort of I ideal that we'd like to get to where we've all got timely and equitable access to the data. Doesn't mean the data's free, doesn't mean the data's open, because you might choose to share your data subject to some rules. If you can have more information about what's happening in your area, in the things that matter to you, you can be much more involved in the decision making around the next thing. The overall outcome we're after is, is open, um, open science and openly available data. Many, many reasons to integrate data. It's not all just because, you, hey, someone can make money from it or governments should be more transparent. But a critical part of the solution is actually understanding how to properly incentivise people to, to uh, encourage them towards pro-sharing behaviour. What are the things that we really need to do?